Hextall likes his hockey team. He should like his hockey team. Ron Hextall is also looking at making possible changes to his hockey team. He absolutely should do that. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Penguins. Comes your way bright and early every weekday morning if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer up Daily Shots of Steelers and Pirates right where you found this. The GM spoke yesterday with us on a fairly lengthy call covering an awful lot of different topics. The general message was that he liked most of what he saw and that he believes within that that the proper approach for the Penguins in the 2021-22 season will be to again push toward the Stanley Cup. If that sounds pie in the sky based on three first-round exits, uh, four straight playoff series losses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So be it. But I'm inclined to agree based on practicality and based on change means different things to different people. To start with the practicality, the idea of blowing up the core is floated, I think, by most people as some sort of symbolic thing. That's it. They've had their chance. Windows closed. The end. So Gino uh, and or Tanger just go. Evgeny Malkin, Chris Letang, thanks for everything. See ya. Even though you were still playing well, especially Letang, over this past season, and even though you are eminently affordable, both of them are ridiculous bargains within the NHL market context, that's it, go, because it's time to try something new, do something different, just because. I just never, ever, ever get this type of thinking. It, it's, it's reactionary to the extreme. It's reacting more to a narrative, really, than to reality. We want to write a new script. It's a new chapter. Well, no, because your new script and your new chapter aren't going to do anything. If you downgrade your talent and you use that same money that you put into these two guys in the final years of their contracts and apply it to someone else, it's just not going to work. It's not going to even out, no matter how happy you are with your potential new script. So that part's that that to me is the silly part. The other part, that's where the lifting comes in. Hextall wasn't about to denigrate his wingers or the team's size and toughness, but he did suggest that all three need an upgrade. He said he'd like to find a way to get bigger and snarlier and everything else. He also acknowledged the obvious, and then that's not easy, because if you do that, generally speaking, you're forfeiting some speed and some skill, and no one's going to want that, least of all the head coach, nor should he. How do you do it? It's tricky. It's tricky. How do you address the goaltending? Well, he wasn't about to bury Tristan Jari either. Ron Hextall said some, you know, things about Jari that were, well, here, just listen for yourself. Well, we do feel like um, Tristan did a good job for us this year from the time that Berkey and I came in in, in mid-February there um, through the end of the year. We had very good goaltending from both guys. Um, obviously, saw what happened in game five unfortunate error there and then you know game six wasn't the best but i think we wouldn't have been where we were without tristan and uh he, he, we all have to remember tristan's a young player he's going to learn from this and he's going to come back better um in september so we all learn lessons in life and 
if you're going to be a goaltender in this league for a long time, you're going to have your ups and downs as pretty much every guy does and you learn from it and get better. So we're confident that Tristan is going to get better. You buying that? You know, are you there with him on that? That sounded to me a lot like what they've been saying for a long time in Philadelphia about Jari's buddy, Carter Hart. And I've got to say that maybe that was the one area of the entire press session where I kind of cringed a little bit because there's been no franchise in the NHL that's been more star-crossed at that position than Philadelphia has. I'm not even saying that as a typical arch-rival jab here or anything like that. It's just a fact. The last quality goaltender on the wrong side of the Commonwealth was Ron Hextall. And they've really, really dug themselves a hole over there, including now that they actually have the talent they've been waiting on, presumably, all this time in heart. I'd rather not see Jari put into that position. That's the one red flag I'm going to raise out of all this. This portion of Daily Shot of Penguins is brought to you by Fubo TV. The monthly cost of cable is over 200 bucks. Well, Fubo TV is just 65 bucks a month to watch all the same channels, including AT&T Sportsnet Pittsburgh. No contracts, cancel any time. And right now, Fubo TV is offering our listeners of this podcast a seven-day free trial and 15% off your first month by going to FuboTV.com slash DK. Once more, you get 15% off your first month by going to FuboTV.com slash DK. I'm on record as being dead certain of one specific stance related to this offseason, and that is that the Penguins need to get either another starter in goal or significant support for Jari. And by that, I don't mean to take a shot at Casey DeSmith, but Casey DeSmith is a clear backup. He's not a threat to be your number one. He's not your guy who's going to push Jari, and he's not going to be your guy ever, ever, ever who's going to start game one of the playoffs. So what you need is an actual push. If you bring in DeSmith and Jari into your next training camp, you will do so with Jari as your de facto number one. You can't do that. No matter how much confidence you'd like to show in the kid, no matter how much you want to make sure that you're not burning uh, his cap hit, the money that he's due over the next two years, you can't do that. I'm with Hextall on almost everything that he said yesterday, and I might even be with him on this Jari thing, provided he knows and isn't about to announce, the way Jim Rutherford would, that he's going to go out and get himself another significant goaltender. Now, what does a significant goaltender look like? It can be, and probably will be, given the depth of the unrestricted free agent market, someone who's older, who's more experienced, who's like, it could be someone from a Jonathan Quick, who's an unrestricted free agent, to a Peter Mrazek. And yes, I'm aware of some of their numbers, and I'm aware that Quick has declined over the last two, three years with the Kings, but I'm also aware that Jeff Carter had declined over the last two, three years with the Kings because they weren't playing any meaningful games. And Quick was used to playing in a lot of meaningful games and was one of the NHL's very best at his position when he was. That, to me, is someone... Like that, don't take the names literally, someone like that who comes in and says, all right, I'm here, I'm here, I can be your number one unless Jari's better. If Jari's legitimately better, if Jari shows signs of maturity, shows signs of greater focus, of awareness, of situational mindfulness, I'm not just talking about that pass, then he can earn his way back into earning the team's trust over an 82-game schedule. But no way 
No way am I handing him that. No way am I saying, go get him, kid. Be like Carter Hart. We'll have Brian Elliott sitting around waiting to pick you up when you fail. That's, that's not how this is going to work. If you're going to be serious about a Stanley Cup, you're going to have to go out and get significant goaltending support. SGS, if you want an acronym for it, to pound it into the ground all summer long. Significant goaltending support for Jari. Someone who could come in and be an immediate threat to be the number one guy, not just for the season opener, but for game one of the next playoffs. This must happen in order for the Penguins to be taken seriously as a cup contender next year. When we come back, just one question. Welcome back. It's time for Just One Question, and that's brought to you on this program always by our friends at the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, where they are doing everything in their power across our region to help those who don't know where their next meal is coming from. And they, in turn, need your help. Find out how $1 from you can produce five full meals. For those in need, visit pittsburghfoodbank.org. One more time, it's pittsburghfoodbank.org. Question comes from Mojo Ryzen. It's more of a complaint, really. In referring to my show yesterday, he says, You really want more from Jake Gensel? Okay. Get a guy on the first line who will get in the face of a Scott Mayfield. I've watched the Boston series with the Islanders. Mayfield and J.G. Pajot both already paid a price and aren't even close to the force physically that they were against the Penguins. Keeping the core together with Mike Sullivan equals more disappointment. 16-5-2 without Evgeny Malkin, the penalty machine. Well, there's a lot of rants in here, primarily, and I chose this submission for that reason, there's going to be a lot of reflexive responses to this. It's a legit disappointment. It's a bummer and a half that the Penguins didn't make it through a single round. That this group of Penguins, which fought and clawed the way it did through that 56-game schedule to win what everyone acknowledged going in and throughout was the toughest division in the NHL. And then to just, pfft, you know, it sucks, okay? There's, there's no way around that. No one's denying that. No one's disputing it. I have not seen, heard, or read that anywhere, and it certainly hasn't come from me. But why is it so complicated Why is it so vexing to just say that the goaltending was terrible? Other things didn't go great, but the goaltending was terrible. If you want to learn something from continuing to watch these playoffs, as it certainly sounds like you are, ask yourself... In which of these ongoing series would you have seen the Penguins be competitive with that level of goaltending? I'll save you the answer. The only team they would have beaten anywhere in the NHL with that kind of goaltending is the Maple Leafs. And that's only because the Maple Leafs would have manufactured a way to lose because that's what they do. That's their raison d'etre. It's who they are. Otherwise, the Penguins lose to any team they play, regardless of their size, speed, skill, savvy, toughness, all the intangibles. It doesn't matter. 
you lose with that version of Jari in net. It's okay to say that. There doesn't need to be multiple layers to this. All of the analytics, all of the common sense tells you that this is true, that this is undeniably true. So just take it and go from there. Get better in goal. And sure, I'd like more from the Jake position, which is what you're referencing, which is what I brought up yesterday. I'd like to see Jake maybe be, you know, healthier, more hale, uh, more capable of withstanding the abuse that he took. And I'd even be open, as I suggested yesterday, to moving Jake or Rust, not both, that'd be weird, for someone who could deliver some of what they do, but also do it with more size and do it with more snarl. I feel like there'd be a benefit to that for the team. But looking at these things like Mayfield and Pajot and what they got away with and stuff like that is completely missing the point, my man. You're frustrating yourself, it sounds like, over something that just really wasn't that big a deal. This was about the goaltending. And to reiterate what I said in the opening segment, Hextall must, must address that. Everything else would be nice, but this this is the must. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. We'll have another one of these tomorrow.